Well, hello everyone. Uh, it's really, really good to see you here. So many of you, I guess more of you are gonna be arriving along the way. Um, so I'm delighted to host this webinar today, this conference um, with a very international audience and very international speakers as well. We have people from the Netherlands, from North America, which is the reason why we're so late in the day. Uh, we have people from Hungary. I see people from uh, the UK, from Poland. So not only do we cover lots of you know, different countries, but also various organizations. We are here, people from orchestras, from ensembles, from ballet, uh, and cherry on the top, uh, a few music publishers uh, will be with us as well. So I guess, you know, in this diversity, uh, we're all really, we're all tied and bound together by the desire uh, to move the whole industry forward, really the effort to explore uh, new ways of working together, especially after the past year. So the past year has been revealing and, and very challenging for, for all of us. And um, I really hope that today's uh, discussion will provide some, some insights and some optimism, some optimistic answers. So before I introduce uh, the panelists, uh, just a couple of words about the webinar itself. Um, it is being recorded for you to share to your colleagues afterwards. Um, there is a chat down below where you guys already started to introduce yourself, which is great. So thank you for doing this. Please um, tell us who you are because sometimes, you know, it's not easy to guess who's hidden behind the obscure username of, the, of Zoom and behind the screens. Um, so please use the chat, abuse of the chat. And um, you can also use the chat to ask questions but I believe there is a specific section down there called Q&A for questions and answers. So you can as well, please write your questions in written form in the chat or in the Q&A. Um, my, our CEO uh, at Music, Aurelia, um, she's kind enough to be, she, she go, she's gonna be answering your questions uh, in written form along the way as well. Uh, of course, we're going to cover your questions orally as well, uh, especially in the, in, the, you know, in the second part of this webinar. So following this webinar, a uh, piece of information for you, uh, MUSIC will offer 90 days free trial uh, for your organizations for as many musicians and colleagues as you want. So if you're willing to give MUSIC a try in your organization for three months, um, I will ask you to let me close the webinar before you leave. Like really stay in the webinar and let me, you know, finish the Zoom session. This will trigger a small uh, sort of uh, a very short information survey where you can enter your information if you're interested. Uh, obviously, you can also write to us uh, after this webinar so we can have a you know, more personal uh, discussion. So I'm your host, Felix. I've been at Music for over two years now. Um, I spent uh, a lot of time uh, in operas, in orchestras, actually training the people. And uh, I also spent the past year um, handling our relation to music publishers, um, which uh, you know, allowed me to really involve all the, also the publishers in this digital universe and try to create a complete bridge from uh, music engraving all the way to musicians performing on stage. Um, so, yeah, I think it's time to discuss digital transformation uh, inside uh, actual orchestras. And for this, we have a, our wonderful um, speakers today, 
So starting with the furthermost location, I'm glad to introduce uh, Alex Clark. Uh, he's associate librarian at the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra. Hi, Alex. Um, and he's been, he's been in touch with music, a close partner and user for a couple of years now. Uh, coming back to Europe, uh, we have two people from uh, Asko Schoenberg um, Orchestra in the Netherlands. So Asko is a contemporary music ensemble uh, who's now uh, fully digitally equipped. Um, and we'll have the occasion to hear from Bente, who is a librarian and production assistant, as well as from David, uh, who is a clarinet player in the Asko Schoenberg Ensemble. So he's, you know, he's going to have really valuable insights as a musician. Um, moving on, we have Patrick McCarthy, uh, head of artistic planning at Ulster Orchestra. So Ulster uh, is a fully digital orchestra in Northern Ireland. Uh, and Patrick, um, in his more uh, of an administrative position, will give us insights on the decision making finances side of things. Last but not least, uh, it's a pleasure to have Hanna Kolebievska with us today. So um, Hanna, some of you may know, um, is working in the higher library at Faber Music UK. And um, I'm really glad that you could make it with us today because Faber Music is certainly one of our closest, closest uh, publishing partners and it's also certainly a very forward-looking house. Um, so it's good to have her at the table today and share, you know, the publisher's vision of digital transformation. Well, so let's start from the beginning, I'd say. Um, and I'd like, I'd like to, you know, explore the, the reasons why uh, our speakers uh, decided to explore digital scores in the first place. So maybe Alex, uh, Alex uh, Clark, um, because you're more of a historic uh, partner and user, you could tell us uh, how you started and why you started uh, dealing with digital sheet music in the first place. Sure, um, I like that uh, designation as a historic member here. <laughs> I think that's fun. Um, so my my background is um, in music composition. Uh, so I that was my uh, my music degree was in in uh, composition, and when I finished that, I immediately started working at uh, at an orchestra um, and became a librarian and uh, have become been in, involved in the orchestra library scene for nearly a decade now. So. I have this composition background and this orchestra librarian foreground kind of thing. Um, and so uh, for me, I've always been interested in uh, in writing music and using using my computer to do that. So it's it's sort of a, a natural uh, thing for me to have uh, music notation and, and software involved in the music making process. So um, I, I try, I've always sort of tried to do that, to combine that into the, the library part of my job as well. Uh, and then I met, I met uh, Aurelia and a few other members of the music team at a, um, at a MOLA conference, Major Orchestra Librarians Association conference, um, several years ago now. And, uh, and I was keenly interested after, after getting a demonstration of the, of the product. And, you know, I wanted to keep in touch and, and keep on top of what was uh, coming up and, and being developed for, for the software, uh, for the iPad. Um, and so it was, it's, it's sort of a, a, right away, I was keenly interested in, in the product and, uh, you know, we've, we've developed little bits of it here at uh, the Vancouver Symphony for our needs and uh, it's been, it's been really nice. Fantastic. Uh, maybe another, um, another experience, maybe Patrick, uh, from your, you know, administrative perspective, how yeah, things yeah. started. Um, hi. Afternoon, everybody, and, and good morning if you're on the other side of the pond. Um, I'm Patrick from the Ulster Orchestra. We're the Symphony Orchestra um, based in Northern Ireland. Um, our first exposure to music uh, came at the Association of British Orchestras conference uh, a couple of years ago, which uh, which we were hosting. 
Um, we had a, a, a fantastic array of, of international delegates. We did a Shostakovich four uh, in that um, in that conference with uh, with musicians from all over the EU. Um, it, it was a fantastic occasion. But the the very beginning of the conference, um, I'd been talking to Aurelia uh, for a little while about uh, about something that that could usefully showcase not just our musicians but music as well so we undertook to to commission a local composer to write uh, a two-minute fanfare for brass ensemble with which we began the the, the opening conference um, and that was our first completely digital commission so right from um uh, from composer through to musician no paper um, and that that sort of set tongs wagging, I think, uh, throughout our own orchestra. Um, it meant that right from the beginning, we had some useful um, advocates uh, from within the orchestra. We'd started off, um, but, well, the, the next step from that project was to look at applications for music just through our chamber music season. Um, we have a, a series called On Your Doorstep, where we send small groups of the orchestra to, to venues around Northern Ireland where the full orchestra can't go. Um, and the kind of the interest there was, was twofold, I think. One, um, where we had a, a programme, say a, a, a two times 45 minute programme with lots of shorter pieces. We were aware that players were kind of fidgeting around with, with lots of bits of paper and it kind of looks messy and sort of slows things down. Um, so we were looking for something that, that tidied that up. Um, and also because we, we sort of wanted to promote better connection between players as well. So we wanted to move to, we recognised the potential for, for a smaller unit in front of players uh, so that players can kind of interact with each, with each, with each other visually uh, much better than they can you know, peering over the, the top of a big black music stand. Um, so things were sort of already in train before before COVID, uh, and then we really just grabbed hold of, of the opportunity that the COVID crisis presented us. Never waste a, never wait, never waste a, a crisis opportunity, um, because we were able to say to players at that point, look, this is what we're concerned about. We're concerned about the, the COVID risk um, of, of passing pieces of paper to each other and the musician picking up music that's maybe been handled by, by the librarian team or by other colleagues. Um, we think this is what's going to keep us safe um, with our return to work, which was August last year. Um, so something that we thought we were probably going to move to anyway, the, the old era of, of transporting bits of paper uh, around a library and between musicians. And it, it just felt like that, that was on the way out anyway. Uh, and all that COVID did was accelerate something that was already in train for us. Um, and since August, we've been completely uh, music based and we've we've not looked back. Thanks, Patrick. Just maybe, Patrick, again, can you tell us where you stand today in terms of, of how many musicians are, are concerned precisely? Uh, so we have 63 players in the orchestra. Um, we've not been doing much augmentation, so not many freelance players whilst we've been um, coming back post COVID, the programs have been a little bit smaller. Um, but from uh, from the 1st of August, we were 100% uh, music uh, and with one or two very minor exceptions, uh, which maybe we'll talk about later. Um, absolutely everyone working off iPads 100% of the time. Thank you so much. Speaking of, of musicians, maybe David, um, you could tell us uh, if you were personally using an iPad already before and how it how it arrived in the orchestra from your musician's perspective. I was not yet using an iPad, so I was happy to be in Oskar Schoenberg and Oskar Schoenberg, Bente, and the ensemble initiated it. And I am extremely happy to be using it for all the very obvious uh, reasons and all the reasons of being a versatile musician and wanting to quickly access and change and always have the right lighting on your music stand without extra lights and all that, everything that comes into play with, with uh, this. So I'm, I'm very happy about it. And, and how did it go with your, oh, sorry, Bente, uh, with your, with your peer musicians, how, how was really the act of acceptation um, within the orchestra? Did you see some people, you know, driving the the way, uh, leading the way, helping each other? Uh, 
were you familiar with technologies and were you maybe able to, you know, um, drive the people around you to, to use the technology? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's very easy for everybody. We have all swiped a screen and, um, yeah, it, there's there's a, a very limited amount of actions that you need to master to be able to control everything you need. So it's it was it was easy enough for everybody. Even the in Dutch we call it digibet. I don't know what the English term is at the moment. The non-digital inclined. Right. Pretty easy <laughs> for <got> everybody. <laughs> Um, if ben, I just so wanted to, yeah, I just wanted to add a little bit um, to this also for uh, the organization standpoint. Um, so, um, uh, Oscar Schoenberg, just as an introduction, uh, we are an ensemble which focuses on uh, new music, so 20th, 20th and 21st century um, music, which balances the most important 20th century composers uh, and also the more uh, recent 21st century work with a strong emphasis on uh, the work of current composers, which would which ties in really well with um, the digitalized um, uh, sheet music. Uh, we do have some issues sometimes with the um, earlier works because they are often not digitalized already and because they're not the grand classical uh, pieces, um, uh, they're not ready uh, uh, um, to be distributed right away. Um, also, I wanted to add that not only work, I work as a librarian, I work as um, um, in production department as well, which means I'm involved in stage management, which is something um, that we had uh, uh, considered when going, um, like going on with, with music. Because um, apart from the um, benefits of more efficient work with um, less hassle of sending out physical scores, um, we did have in mind the aesthetic of the stage, um, something uh, that Patrick mentioned as well, I believe, um, where the traditional music stands are this big, um, yeah, black block basically um, in front of the musicians, but also in front of their instruments. Um, which is something we were very happy um, uh, to, to leave behind, basically, to go more digital. Um, and it has something, especially now, actually, we, we noticed with um, the more live streams that we do and other um, uh, filmed productions, um, it, did, it did, does help um, in that sense. It doesn't block the musicians um, uh, on stage in the view. Um, yeah, the thing is, so that was kind of what motivated our, our transition. Um, and I have put in a lot of effort in the beginning for um, little how to's with the more not so digitally inclined members of our ensemble. Um, but like David said, it, um, because most of our uh, like steady members could take them iPad home and work with them at home, um, people usually kind of quickly got into using the iPad, it's not a very difficult um, um, setup. Um, and there were benefits of um, being able to see the score, not just your own part, but I'm kind of going on with um, the rest of the questions maybe. Um, but that was one of the huge benefits I think that everyone saw. And then um, it kind of helped getting into this new system uh, because you could see the benefits uh, early on. Well, thank you so much. So I see a couple of questions um, already uh, Patrick, thank you for starting to answer. Um, there's a question which I think you could cover orally, uh, which is how to actually acquire uh, the hardware in the first place. Uh, how did you, you know, manage to maybe convince and find the, the finances also for this? So Patrick, maybe you can, uh, you can say a word about that? Um, yes, yeah, so we we undertook to lease iPads, but we bought pencils and pedals, just so that that seemed to be the most sensible way to go. Um, in terms of how did we lever funding, I, I think, again, the usefulness of COVID meant that, that we were able to say to our board uh, and to our, our local government funders, look, this is something we really need to keep us safe, as well as it being something that, that we think is, is the future. So it was fortunately uh, fairly straightforward to, to make the, the business case for that. Uh, there was a second part to the question. I can't remember what that was. Um, 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 um. 
oh yeah it was about charging stations we we've kind of we've really just trusted musicians to to treat the ipad and to treat music as if it was the same pad of music that they'd been given by the librarian a couple of weeks before so you don't leave it at home you don't forget to bring it in and in the same way we confer the responsibility and the expectation that they will remember to bring their ipad and most importantly that they'll remember to charge it before they come and once or twice someone will forget but but i think that was important we said right from the beginning it's your responsibility to to deal with this resource uh, and to come to work um, with that prepared in the same way that you prepare your instrument and you prepare everything else uh, before a rehearsal. Interesting. Maybe Bente, you can tell us uh, how the musicians handle the hardware in Asko Schoenberg. What were the decisions regarding this? Um, I'd say quite similar because um, we work, so we're an ensemble and an orchestra, so we have our um, uh, yeah, like David, our, our actual members, and then we do work with a lot of freelance players. Um, usually, within time like COVID times, we uh, we do rely on our uh, regular members more. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much the same. Um, we we give them the the iPad charger, uh, page turner, and and pen that we use for the for the annotations, and people are responsible, and also the freelance players that we um, uh, we employ um and that we give the ipad to they are also responsible for the ipad from first rehearsal uh, up until the last um concert um charging is sometimes forgotten but then we also make we always make sure that there is a charging uh like possibilities at rehearsals and also just before concerts um yeah maybe david is there anything i'm, I'm missing but I'm sorry, I was about to answer a question in the chat. Um, well, you can answer no, you didn't. right here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, somebody asked, how many hours does a fully charged iPad last while using music actively continuously? It, it lasts, uh, it would last uh, for two, three hour rehearsals for sure and probably all day. I don't know. Maybe if you have an an older iPad that the battery wears down, but uh, news uh, music. Uh, I don't ex experience music as taking up a lot of battery power at all. So um, no, it just goes on and on, and and you got plenty, plenty. Well, thank you, thank you, David. If I may add, uh, also from from our music experience in different locations and different different um, ensembles and orchestras. Um, because it's possible to use music offline with, with the Wi-Fi off, uh, you're going to definitely be saving a lot of battery um, during an entire day of rehearsals. We've never really encountered a critical situation with the batteries at all. Uh, thank you, David, for confirming this. <laughs> Anyways, um, so coming back to maybe to library uh, practices, um alex um maybe you could tell us a little bit more about the benefits you see as a librarian using music and uh really the workflows that you have uh, also maybe the relations with the music publishers if you ever had uh, some sure yeah i've i've got all all three of those things i can talk about quite happily um but i would i would mention that our orchestra is not fully uh implemented with with music uh, we're still relying on paper at this point, uh, and and that's uh, that's probably going to continue for a little while. And against my best efforts, <laughs> we're still relying on paper more than I'd like. Uh, but we we did we if we have a couple examples where music has helped save us a lot of time. The first one being uh, Boeing's for our concert master. Um, so the way we started with music was we we um, we borrowed five iPads. Music sent us five iPads or six iPads, I think, one for the library and one for each of the string principles. Uh, and then we, we, we wanted to do a Boeing test and see if, if we could do some Boeing um, things. And we came up with a, a couple of issues, but we also came up with uh, a, lot of, a lot of time saving uh, for that as well. Um, and the, the best time saver was uh, sending digital files to our concert master to put Boeings in uh, and then have those returned because he could do that without coming, coming into the building or without us uh, having to wait for a rehearsal to happen to meet with him. 
Um, so that was the first one. The, the, the next one, more recently, our music director is, uh, is from Holland. So hello to uh, <laughs> you guys in, in the Netherlands. Um, and so he, uh, he uh, we would be sending him physical scores uh, across the world. Uh, and so it was really helpful when he got music on his iPad and then he could, uh, he could just get his scores digitally from us. He likes to, what he refers to as uh, put Picasso lines in there. Uh, he does, he uses about five different colors for different things and, and uh, he loves doing that uh, with pencils, but he, he's been doing it with music so that we can then get his score. And what we end up doing is printing his score on, on large paper so that he can see it from the, the music stand. Um, we're about to experiment with um, using a, a large monitor to plug into uh, the iPad so that he can he can use his actual digital scores. Uh, we haven't done that yet, but we're we're looking forward to that. Um, and then, sorry, Felix, what was the last question you had on on that one? Uh, how you handle the you know the ordering of these digital scores? Oh yeah, well actually, we we just had our first uh, music music publisher um, send us music through the music app. Um, so we've had lots of music come in digitally, but the first, um, uh, hello to Anna Maria, who's I, I think in the, I think I saw your name go by in the chat earlier, uh, from the Canadian Music Center, uh, who um, who sent us uh, music via the music app that we were able to to use. And I mean, we were able to start right away with, with Boeing that uh, through music and then uh, being able to provide parts to everybody else uh, on paper afterwards. So I, we've, We've been, th those are sort of the main ways that we've used music in the last year or so. Thank you, Alex. Well, this, this I think, uh, is a good occasion to talk about what music publishers can do and have started to do. Um, you know, in this whole uh, digital direction. So maybe, Hannah, uh, you can tell us a little bit what's your vision if you see some new trends uh, and what Faber can offer in terms of digital material? Well, maybe um, just going back uh, to how we started, um, the need was born out of necessity. Uh, in many cases, we struggle with deliveries, especially urgent deliveries. And, you know, our priority um, as a higher library um, is to deliver materials. And for me, that's the most important thing. Uh, so, I'm, you know, it doesn't sometimes matter whether it's a physical delivery or digital. The priority is to get it to the end user, to the customer, uh, to the orchestra. Um, so, um, you know, when we got in touch, I think two years ago or, or something like that, um, you know, we thought we would uh, give music a go. And um, yeah, so it's happened really organically. Um, you know, we don't plan for these things really. However, we do want to be involved. We do want to um, modernize the way we work. And um, about our plans, um, hmm. uh, we would love to do more digital deliveries. Uh, although we do pride ourselves on our physical materials and on our additions. So, our highest scores are made on site in house, um, and we still pretty much send a lot of physical material. Um, maybe not these days that much, you know, due to COVID, uh, but we are still transitioning uh, the way we work. My direction would be: I'm very willing to 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 do the digital delivery. Um, but of course, I need to be really mindful, or, or you know, on with how we work and how my colleagues perceive it as well, um, because as I said, we're really proud of our physical materials. Um, but yeah, uh, the necessity sort of brought in um, here, and um, it's been working pretty well, I think. So we we see the benefits for sure. Thank you, Hannah. Um... I see a question from Mark Fabulic. Maybe maybe Bento will be able to answer because I think Bento has experience with receiving content and distributing material to the orchestra, uh, especially during maybe during COVID times. Is it uh, have you have you gone through some changes, Bento, in house? Uh, 
Um, yeah, definitely. Um, uh, when it comes to the hiring materials from the publisher, we um, uh, we have received some directly through uh, Newsic, um, and specifically regarding the question from Mark, um, everyone has their own um, uh, iPad and their own um, uh, account. So yeah, basically we do distribute the material through Newsic right away. Um, we do, like, as I said, we kind of, we're still kind of in a hybrid mode. Um, so we do also, um, uh, uh, use, um, not necessarily only music, um, based scores, but also other digitized scores and that we send them through, through, uh, music as well. Um, and yeah, regarding COVID, um, we've definitely had well for me personally um i've definitely had the option of taking the ipad that i use the control ipad uh home and being able to send through uh, uh scores and uh, make even make changes um in specific projects that we use uh from home which meant i didn't have to go in th into the office where i only go like in, once in a fortnight now Thanks, very clear. Uh, I see another question from Mark <laughs> um, regarding publishers, how many are participating this way? So this is definitely a, you know, an ongoing process of having a, a smoother workflow from publishers to, to end musicians. And as of today, I can tell you because I am actually in charge of music publishers here at Music. Uh, we have over 40 music publishers who actually, you know, offer their higher material, their perusal scores uh, via music. And some of them I can see here among the audience. I see people from Edition Peters. I see people from Boozy and Hawks, from Faber Music. So a couple of, of these names we are definitely you know, in touch with. And, uh, and you know, it's, I think it's something where we need to be all together, like sort of all on the same page and on the same side. Um, uh, so the more, you know, the more orchestras are going to be requesting digital material, the more there's going to be, uh, you know, the awareness on the publisher's side that this is something that has to be really clarified. And we, music, uh, will be definitely also putting as much effort as we possibly can into offering the tool, the best tools to, you know, securely and, um, and transparently uh, you know, sort of join the two parties together. So yeah, um, if you, if, I, I will be able to send you a, a list of all the publishers that work with us. But again, it's an ongoing process. Mark and everyone. Um, so coming back to uh, maybe um, the, you know, the practical things, uh, because I've seen a couple of questions about, you know, the battery and uh, how to give iPads to everyone. Mm, maybe David or, or, or Patrick, uh, what exactly does each musician ha have and use? Um, do they, did they also start to use maybe music web? Did you have a chance to, ha to have a look at music web? Like what's the entire set of, of, of hardware that's necessary for, for a musician to, to properly use digital scores? Maybe David, because you're an actual user. My set is just simply the iPad and the pencil and the Bluetooth pedal that, that you use for page turns with your feet. That's it. Pretty straightforward. Was it provided by the institution? Oscar hmm. Schoenberg set me up totally. So, yes, it's their iPad. But I use it for all my musical projects, not only Oscar Schoenberg, and using music using music to because I, I make my own you know uh, i'm a jazz musician as well so i make my own um uh, uh scores so um yeah great well patrick how is it in the uh at alster everyone has a yeah they do uh, as david says we, we've just kept it simple uh, and that's why it works i think so when the orchestra returned uh, after the first lockdown in august um everyone came in uh, into the office once 
um, connected iPad, pencil, uh, and Bluetooth pedal, uh, and and that's been it. We've we've not really had any kind of we've had no sort of technical issues with any of the equipment since. Um, we have our assistant librarian um, at every rehearsal, and, and that's been a slight change, I suppose. The, the days where the where the librarian might turn up on the first day, uh, and then we might not see them again uh, until the next project. We do uh, have someone there all the time, chiefly, I suppose, because if there's any change of personnel, if we have to replace someone, it's the old days of of someone going stick and they leave their music on the stand, and then the the, the debt player will come in and the music's there. That We've, we've lost that uh, because, of course, our musicians are taking the iPads away at the end of each each day's work. So we do have, um, I think, maybe 10 spares that, that are just sitting there all the time. But we have found that although we did quite an extensive process of, of onboarding with music, um, both with the whole company, we did a we had the whole company on a Zoom meeting and Marin uh, addressed everyone at once. Um, and answered a lot of the same sort of questions that are coming up here. Um, but uh, we then had some, some smaller focus groups where, where musicians were, were able to ask all of those questions um, that they maybe didn't feel comfortable to do in the big forum. Uh, and of course, some onboarding sessions with our, with our librarians. Um, uh, since then, we, we've not really had any, any kind of issues. Uh, and because of that, that ease of use uh, and simplicity of the facility, even freelance musicians who haven't had that elaborate onboarding process can just pick the thing up uh, and and within five minutes uh, away they go uh, and of course there's plenty of um, experienced musicians around them just to, to tell them what to do but everyone's everyone's pretty tech savvy now sounds good well bent uh, i know you because because uh, asco has a number of um of freelance musicians um, how does how does it work with the music accounts? How do you manage to have all the all the content prepared and ready for for people just coming in for for concerts? Um, well, so for us it works in the sense that we have we have twenty iPads that we use, um, and we have twenty um, uh, players in our uh, ensemble, um, which well it means for our larger projects before COVID, um, we wouldn't be able to use uh, music. So that is one thing that we do look to. Uh, we make a schedule for the whole uh, season. Well, when I say we, I, I make the schedule for the whole season um, where we look at how close each of the projects are. Um, and if we can use the iPads for all of these projects, if there are certain projects where we would play music that we suspect wouldn't uh, might not be able uh, to get through uh, digitally. Um, but we we often, especially outside of COVID, we do um, uh, uh, work with freelance players. And what we do is um, we try to get the um, iPads to everyone around six weeks or a month before first rehearsal. Um, that is one thing though that, that is less convenient um, than regular sheet music because an iPad you don't really send out in an envelope to someone so someone does have to come physically come pick it up um, but on the other hand when you have someone um, uh, like Patrick said if there is some kind of last minute change um, you do have all of the um, even the annotations we've had someone fall out right before um, a second concert for example um, but then we could, because we, well, okay, so within music, you have several ways of sharing um, the, um, the different scores. And what we always use is, is projects, which means that everyone can see everyone's parts. For us, that works because no one has the same part as someone else. We don't have multiple violin players playing the same part. Um, so everyone has their own part. So that means that everyone has, is, um, uh, everyone has access to everyone else's annotations and also for me so I can share that with the replacement or even the or the freelance player that comes in to play um, and even I've once had right I think it was even right after um, uh, uh, the break or right before the start of a concert one of our uh, players had some issue with her iPad and well as you can imagine she was literally five minutes away of getting onto stage 
there was a lot of stress, stress involved and I actually ran up upstairs. We were quite lucky to have it um, happen at our own um, uh, uh, hall where we also have our offices. I could run up, get a replacement iPad and all her annotations were right there in uh, in the same or in, on the different iPad. Um, so, I mean, there's benefits and there's some fallbacks like everything, but there's, I think there's a lot of fallbacks that you can fall back to. Yeah. Thanks. I will allow myself to answer uh, a question is that a question that I saw. Um, actually, it's been answered. It was a question regarding higher material. So yes, and Hannah, this is what you're what you're using. Actually, uh, we have a system of expiration date. Maybe Hannah, you want to tell how this works from from your end when you receive um, a higher material request. Um, it's really simple, and that's the beauty of, of music. We, I have to say, we really, really like uh, using music for that reason. Um, there's a really friendly dashboard for publishers. Uh, we, um, we have a library of music, um, of scores on music, um, scores and part. Uh, um, that library is, of course, only visible only to us. And we upload um, new files at the moment on case by case basis. So when needed, um, but it would be nice eventually to, to upload a lot to our publishers library. But anyway, when we receive um, an order, we just deal with it the same way we would deal with a physical order really. Um, so we set up an expiry date, um, the number of users, of course, it's worth having a chat with, uh, you know, the libra librarian we are in touch with. Um, the nice thing is it can be all easily changed as well. Um, you know, if more users are needed or a different date. Um, so I set up that expiry date and I don't really know what happens after. So it's nice to uh, read the chat and, and see that there's a, a blue watermark and etc. So it's really nice that I can hear from you guys from this other perspective. Um, but yeah, it's really, really nice and easy. And it's made our life uh, really easier. Um, the only thing, of course, is um, still not many orchestras have iPads. So that's that's the problem. We are all, you know, um, for it, uh, for digital delivery. Um, maybe at the moment sort of as a hybrid to have printed materials and digital um but the only problem is i guess uh not, not many orchestras can still um afford having um ipads um and, and that's it but in terms of um my job or, or for my colleagues it's really easy to set up a transaction. Of course, I have to say, um, we also have our internal uh, systems that you know I, I uh, enter my uh, higher order as usual in my own system because we do invoicing separately. So that's all connected. So we all do everything by the book, like always with physical materials. And um, the only difference is the delivery is just one click away rather than um, sending a parcel and I, I will just um, I hope I won't be bored you know it won't be boring for you to hear um, about our delivery problems but due to Brexit uh, we've had um, a lot of trouble sending to Europe a lot of delays uh, it's really bad still um, so we of course we're working on it uh, but we sent some parcels I think beginning of February and some of them are still stuck um, in Berlin, or in Germany, uh, not in Berlin, sorry, uh, 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 in Germany. Uh, and um, so we had to send alternative um, uh, parcels by different couriers and all that. But we used music a lot to, to cover that problem. So uh, that really helps. It, it helps having this option. Thanks. So I, di I didn't think of Brexit as a reason to use music, but now it's <laughs> become more obvious. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> just a quick word, because uh, I saw some concerns um, as of 
how to afford that many iPads and uh, how to reach out to freelance musicians who don't have an iPad in the first place. Well, the good news, and this is not to advertise, it's just to inform that we have launched Music Web in beta, typically to address this situation. So now music is available on a computer, and I think it's it's an you know it's it's a more convenient place for libra librarians to import their different uh, material and share it to the different musicians. And this is also a way to have your freelance freelance musicians just connect to their computer and see the material without having to send an iPad in a, in a box, right? <laughs> in advance. Um, so in terms of markings, I see questions regarding the markings and the rental material. Yes, uh, you, can, you can keep your markings once um, a piece is uh, sort of out of out of date when it's, it's expired um, you can still see your markings actually you can you can re you can use them copy paste them and you can of course see them again when you reorder the same work the next season mm, so maybe alex um because i know that you've been you know you're involved also in video producing i think um Maybe you can you can tell us if you see some benefits in using digital scores when when working with you know uh, sort of master files sort of uh, full scores um, in terms of navigation and the different you know markings and and tools that you have available. Sure. Yes. Um, part of during COVID, part of the way my job has uh, evolved a little bit was that I've now become the the video director, so I mark the scores and. Uh, sit with the team moving cameras around uh, and tell them what's coming up and what to go to next, that kind of thing. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's it's been uh, it's it's a really useful tool for that kind of that kind of thing. Is when I can get all the scores digitally and just make my own markings on them in a hurry. Um, we've had some discussions about how uh, how like what what the next steps will be because there's lots of interesting technology that's that's being really pushed forward right now in the video land. Um, so there's uh, there's other software that you can you can use to, to digitalize your cues. Uh, so we can we can figure out ways to, to put our, our cues for the video team into into the scores in music. And and so this this could be really helpful. Uh, we haven't had to do this yet, but like if I if I have to go in quarantine or something, uh, I could just, you know, my my digital score is available, I can just send it to somebody. Um, and and then somebody else can from the team can can jump in and, and direct the video. So it's it's it, it, it especially in times of COVID where uh, we might not you know somebody might not want to come to my house to pick up a score or I might not have the ability to get into uh, the library to drop something off. Uh, that that score with those digital markings is uh, a lot easier to to transfer to somebody else. Also, uh, I mentioned earlier, our, our music director likes to put all, all kinds of marks and stuff in, in his score and he sends that to the library. Um, so that can that can also help inform the decisions I make for the uh, which cameras to put on which musicians at which time, that kind of decision, because I can I can see where, where he thinks things are important and uh, where, where, where he's gonna be looking for certain cues and stuff. If, if he's got clarinet written in his, uh, in his score, I know he's gonna be looking at the clarinet. So if we have a camera behind the clarinet, we might be get a really good, you know, this kind of thing uh, from him. So like just having that, having access to these things is uh, just, just makes the, the, the work a little bit easier or at least more artistic and more interesting. Thank you. Well, it's uh, actually, I just realized that we don't have anyone in within the speakers uh, from an opera house, but there are opera representatives, I think, in the audience. Um, so I know that in opera houses, you know, digital scores have been mostly used within the technical departments rather than in the pit by the musicians. So uh, this is definitely something to consider if you're in opera house. Uh, maybe find uh, digital workflows to be more convenient for stage managers and you know qu the choir directors and maybe the artistic and tech uh, people around who are definitely finding it 
more convenient to work on an iPad or a lighter iPad Air, for example, than with the huge uh, piano reductions of an entire opera season. So this is also something that's definitely possible. Uh, I'm not an opera player, but just want to say that the lighting on your iPad, you can adjust the level of lighting. You don't need any music stand lights. It's always great the way you want it. Mm. Well, thanks. Pa Patrick, do you have uh, similar experience yeah. with the lighting? I, I do, and actually the, the benefit of that, um, not just in that every musician can have the light exactly as they want, um, is that, that it just cleans up the whole visual aspect. And of course, all of us are, are getting used to, um, to digital relay of our concerts now and the visual aspect. So once you take away uh, the need for either increased overhead lighting or individual stand lights, you're also taking away all of that messy cabling and spooling and, and uh, the amount of work that needs to be done to, to tidy a stage uh, such that it, it looks really good on camera. Um, so that's been a, a really important um, factor for us that it just looks so neat uh, on camera and also it, it's completely uniform you know everyone's stand looks now exactly the same give or take a, a bit of lighting difference so um, uh, backlight difference so that's been a real real key benefit for us uh, in these times and uh, I expect it will continue to be because I think we'll all be doing uh, at least hybrid uh, mixed digital and live uh, events for, for some time to come. Thanks, absolutely. So we're coming close to an hour of, of this webinar. Um, so I think we can, you know, get a couple questions uh, from the from the participants. Um, I see one here, uh, quite a tricky question. I'd, I'd say, what's the situation with rights when an orchestra uh, scans a copyrighted work and uploads it to the music drive? Well, you know, things are happening within orchestras. Uh, it's obviously, um, what, what's definitely illegal is to go and perform uh, something that's, uh, that's copyrighted, uh, especially when it comes to higher material. So I know that, you know, it's still something that is in construction with the music publishers to really find these hybrid ways of working, you know, getting paper, maybe scanning, using it in music, receiving pieces directly in music so i think this is a discussion that um that you have you must you know transparently sort of address also directly with the music publishers um music we're here just as a technical technical solution available but we're not really the decision makers on on, on these questions definitely not and we'll be happy to you know try to concretize solutions technically speaking um, once once the discussions move on won't be able to fade in fade out the orchestra pit anymore yes so in ballet in ballet um, context uh, just like in opera context uh, the the light question is crucial in the pit and this I think is one of the reasons why so far we have very very few experience in in pits um so there are actually tricks to fade out all the ipads as, at once um other than just asking every musician to turn off the screen uh, for example it's feasible it's possible to include a black page at some point and it's just sufficient to turn the page and land onto a black page and this will be almost like the screen is completely off we've made tests and it's it's really um, definitely convincing in terms of darkness at that point. Yeah, we did that too for music theater project, inserted black pages, but uh, we didn't do a fade. Right. So, so yes, I think we're, um, we've already started to explore also ways to sort of control a bunch of iPads uh, remotely in terms of lightning, but this is definitely not easy because it's not a software question, it's a hardware question. So yes, there are, there are, there are solutions to this um, for ballet and opera houses. Any other questions? Maybe, oh yes, I think there is one here. 
Mm -mm. Uh, that music has some responsibility to advise users about the rights issue. Yes, well, so at music, you know, we're, we're trying to deal with two different um, privacy uh, policies at once. One is that we really want to uh, give all our users sufficient privacy. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of regulation on this, especially for apps available in the App Store. So we want to make sure that everyone is has its pri has his private universe and own account and on the other side when it comes to you know institutions ordering content from publishers well there we're happy to always have discussions with the three parties involved the publisher the orchestra in question and music trying to find the best way to work together so every time a new orchestra has experienced music and had to, you know, contact a publisher to order material, we were happy to be in the conversation so that there is really a transparent discussion for the first, you know, for the first concerts and rehearsals. We want to have the three parties involved so that everything runs smoothly. So if you ever consider, you know, doing a digital concert, please involve the publisher and involve us in the discussion already beforehand so that we make sure everything is transparent. Uh, There's also the page. digital watermarks, right? There's the digital watermarks yes. on things that uh, once, a, once a, a license has expired, you still see it maybe, but you can't perform from it really. So it's, it, it, there are some safety nets there, I think. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we created this sort of secure environment for higher material, actually more generally for publisher originated material. We have a number of protection um, available. Uh, David, you want to tell us a word about, a word about uh, having an iPad with only one page in front of your eyes rather than two pages of paper. How did this go for you? Yes, um, that's fine because uh, you can Either you can, if if it's if it's too small, you can hold the put the iPad in landscape instead of portrait, and then you automatically see the the first thing you see is the top half of the page, and then when you when you press your page turn, you go to the bottom half of the page. You can also enter different page turn marks so that you determine where there may be extra page turns or whatever or not whatever, but that. And uh, so we with Oskar Schoenberg, we have the iPads, the, the maximum size. So that's a, a very nice thing to have. But on the smaller ones, you could definitely put them landscape and then um, read half a page at a time. And you can easily press uh, going a page back if you need to go back to a repeat. And um, that's not a problem. Does that answer the question? Uh, yes, maybe David, you also know about the half page turn um, feature. Yes. So Can you tell us a word about this. So uh, if you have your iPad in portrait and you do half page turn, then when just like uh, musicians used to rip up their parts so you could already flip over the top or to see the next. In this case, you are determining a half page turn and while you're still reading at the bottom you can uh, you can uh, already be aware of the new top absolutely yes yeah. so that's a way of sort of anticipating uh what's coming next yeah and dealing with only one page instead of two so i think we're gonna come to the end of this webinar maybe we can take a couple more questions if there are some let me make sure um when playing from the application is it possible to adjust the view staff by staff uh well so as explained one sees either one entire page in portrait or in landscape either two pages next to one another or half a page but more zoomed in uh, music does also support music xml format so this is something we didn't quite mention, but it's possible to have Music XML inside music, which allows for a very dynamic uh, display. You can really you know, adjust how many staves you want, how many bars you want per, 
per state, et cetera. So yes, there are some options uh, with the dynamic format, music XML. Can we keep um, more complicated edits like uh, cuts? Yes, you can. Um, so in opera houses, uh, they like to use the jump feature, uh, which allows some quick navigation from one, one place to another. Uh, you can easily, you know, manipulate, manipulate the pages, uh, move them around, duplicate the pages, insert new pages, take pictures uh, inside your score and add it as a new page. So even in Opera stage management configurations, uh, there are a lot of things that you can do with the iPad because the iPad is not only a cheap, cheap music reader, it's also possible, you know, to add videos and, and links to, to, to maybe to some sound, um, to some sound tutorials or whatever. So this is definitely, you know, using the iPad, utilizing the iPad as a small portable computer. Mm, any other questions? Maybe the last question. No, I think we- no, Can I just throw out one of the quick benefit? Um, uh, yeah. David will know more about this than me. Um, when we're sharing uh, parts with musicians, of course, they can see everyone else's part. Uh, of course, they've got access to their own, but they can see the whole orchestral set and the score, which I know has been really, really beneficial to players when we've been doing unfamiliar repertoire, especially contemporary repertoire, um, that they can, they're not having to slow rehearsals down and asking conductors questions when actually they, they can answer the question themselves by just referring to, to the material that they've got in front of them. Absolutely. Uh, we have another question from Mark uh, in Boston uh, regarding the markings, how they saved and, and, and stored. Uh, ben, do you want to say a word about that, or shall I? Sorry, I'm just looking for the for the question. Yes. Um, um, oh, uh, so, so the question just disappeared somehow. Okay. Um, oh yeah, it's now in the chat. It's in the answered place, I think. <laughs> All right. Um, how would um, they can be said? Okay, so what happens when um, so when you use higher material? Um, if uh, the license has been expired, there there's this blue watermark, um, but the um, the material will still stay within the project. And so what we do is we uh, or, or we we make projects for each of the concerts um, or pro projects with a, a lowercase p, um, and uh, so each of the so all of the uh, scores and parts still remain within the relevant con um, uh, project, but, but just with uh, the added blue watermark. And if you would um, renew the license, the watermark would disappear. Uh, and the markings are actually there on the page um, uh, for the specific parts that, um, that have an annotations. Um, yeah, so it, it, it's, it's, we don't really have a system or an organization because it's just there in the, the parts that have been used. Yes, thank you. And there is like an, an extra question. It's, yes, it's in the music account on the cloud. Uh, of course, when it's your own material, you can just as well print it out when it's your own material and you can print it out with the markings that will, you know, that will become sort of embedded onto the PDF. But it's one way to, uh, make your own sort of a backup uh, save saves of your material. So yes, it remains on the music um, environment, all the markings in the form of layers. Uh, this I think we didn't quite mention, but um, you know the, the annotations that you create on your iPad, they're really a layer on top of the original score. So you can always very easily come back to the original score. And even more than this, you can re you can sort of aggregate different versions of a piece. The markings of this conductor and this concert master, and then the next season, it would be another layer for a different concert master. So you'd be able to really switch between different versions of a single piece. Felix, what about um, between different organizations? So if, our, if we get a conductor from somewhere who just did a piece and he's like, I wanna use my layers uh, at this organization, is that, is that a fairly easy transfer? Well, it is if he was using music already. Um, I think this was one of the questions 
uh, about four score, which of course uh, is is pretty pretty solid, pretty strong in the U.S. Uh, it's just, it's a U.S. based uh, application which is great for individual um, sheet music reading. So we don't have yet a bridge from four score to music which will you know preserve the layer layerish uh, markings. Uh, but if, if, if you have someone using music coming from outside, they can definitely use their own markings, bring them on top of your existing markings. So yes, there is some flexibility. There. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, maybe one, one last question. I see one here. Uh, music space. Uh, are they available to a creator user only under license? No, so your markings, if you start doing markings in music, they will be yours. They will be there uh, the whole time available for you in your account. Um, when playing from the application, is it possible to adjust the view? Yes, this I think we answered already. Great, so I don't wanna be, uh, oh, for the publishers, one last, I, wanna, I don't wanna be, I think we're gonna be finishing at, um, at 10 in four minutes, right? So that we can all move on. It's getting to be quite late in here. So publishers for providing higher materials. Uh, should we assume the digital materials will be clean or marked? Uh, Hannah, maybe a, an answer to this? I think uh, I've hmm. heard. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I think we can assume that they should be clean. Um, although we'll see how we go because we're still pretty new. To this whole game and sometimes our customer clients request um you know used materials with boeing so maybe there will be a possibility because it's not always a good thing for the materials to be clean um sometimes we <laughs> we like them used um but uh, for now what we've done um uh, you know um every time we provided brand new clean PDFs, uh, really. So, so clean materials. Um, yeah. But I think you know, um, if there's a need, we can work together. I'm sure we can because you know, anytime we have some question, I can just speak to you, Felix, directly, and I know you listen to our feedback. So, um, I think we we can work with it, whatever is needed or wanted. Yes, yes. absolutely. <laughs> well, so I think we're coming to an end. Um, I want to thank you. I want to thank all the fantastic speakers for their, you know, for the great insights. Um, a warm thank you also to all of you participants for the very relevant questions. Uh, please reach out to Music for further conversation, if you will. And uh, don't forget that if you're interested in giving Music a try for a three month, uh, a, a 90 days trial, please fill in the form which should appear right after I close this uh, Zoom session. So thank you again, everyone. Have a very nice rest of your day. We'll be in touch. Merci. Et, uh, et au revoir. À bientôt.